Yeah, I'm pretty sure go. it's Jamie. Oh, there we go. Jerome. Jerome Hi, is in Jerome. the chat. Oh, buddy. Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you. Yeah, I, I don't understand the. It, oh, yeah. it's, a, it's a Wisconsin thing. Oh, is it? Oh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. I have no idea, but it sounds <laughs> sounds sounds hilarious. <laughs> Thanks for being here, guys. Yeah, thank you. Thank you all for tuning in. All right, I am hitting live on Instagram. And... Yep, Instagram's gone live. Yep. I don't have Instagram. I know. I'm really behind the eight ball. I'm kind of scared of oh, Instagram. Oh, it's okay. I think I need, need to dip my toe in maybe. I'm thinking about it, thinking about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's, look, um, it's a funny world though because, um, you know, I can get into Instagram and and YouTube, but people are telling me you should go to TikTok. That's where, it, where it's all at. I'm like, ah. Uh, I don't know no. about that either. <laughs> Not my thing. Nah. Sorry for you TikTokers out there, but yeah, that's just... I think it's a great platform, but yeah, I just, I find if I have too many socials going on, it's just too much. Way too much. Yeah. 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 Fair enough. All right. Yep. Well, formal introductions. Uh, welcome guys uh, to the two viewers who are watching right now. Um, Yay. Thank you all for tuning in uh, for this wonderful live stream. And this, this week's uh, Big Fat Yarn, I've, I'm joined by... This lovely Aussie gal, the Alicia, uh, goes under the handle, the Baroness of Beef. So Aussie connections, um, yes. always lovely to to connect with my fellow Aussies and anyone else that wants to join in my channel, my small little YouTube channel. Um, so I just want to say thank you so much and thank you for your precious time. Um, it's my absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's going to be a awesome time i reckon because uh what i like to do in these live streams uh i like to start things off with a little game if that's all right yeah Love so these game. are gonna be bring it um some quick fire questions um and i try to make it interesting I i've tried to make it as interesting anyway so hopefully should i be prepared also, or scared these <laughs> oh look you know what let's let's keep it even more interesting let's give you five seconds for each question <gasps> Oh, okay. <laughs> so it really is going to be quick fire. Yeah. All right. So uh, this little game is um, basically you're going to pick out of two answers. You're going to keep one. Yep. The other one goes forever. All okay. right. So, so like, for example, this is not, and it'll be related to like low carb keto carnivore. Yeah. No. So for example, like apples and bananas. That's yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. First one. Bacon or eggs? To keep? To keep. Yeah, to keep. Eggs. Oh. Mad. I like I like that answer. <laughs> All right. 100%. Uh 100%? Mm, okay. Um may I ask why, by the way? Cuz eggs are bomb. They're like yeah. I eat so many of them. Oh yeah. 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 If if you let I'm me, so I would surprised. eat. Oh really? Because everyone see, I see everyone on on the whole, you know, the bacon gang in, in social media. Everyone loves, you know, bacon. But every time I ask this question, everyone always goes with eggs. So ah, yeah. No, don't get me wrong. I love bacon. I had a piece of bacon today. But yeah, if you were like, it's one or the other, eggs will win hands down. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Uh, chicken or seafood? Seafood. Five. Ooh, seafood. That's an Aussie thing. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Salmon. Yeah. Hello. Prawns. Hello. Uh, so you're not a fan of chicken? Oh, uh, I chicken's okay, but yeah, gosh, no. Nah. Give, give me that beautiful salmon any day of the week. <laughs> Those amigas. Yeah. No. I. I can't. Yeah. No. Seafood's the bomb. Can't. Can't get rid of that. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Lamb or pork? Pork. Wow. And the reason that was so quick is that I yeah. don't tolerate the protein of lamb. It makes me really? quite sick. 
Yeah, I love wow. the taste of it. I loved it as a child, ate truckloads yeah. of it, and I can make a really mean roast lamb. And then something happened in my adult years, and, oh, it's not pretty. So, yeah, pork. Slow-cooked pork, pork oh. belly. Ah. Oh, look, pork, you can't – I don't think you can go wrong with pork. That's the thing. Like, you can cook lamb really bad as well, but <laughs> – Oh, I think you can cook anything really bad, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, pork, pork's very hard to cook, you know, like, I think pork just tastes amazing, but yeah, no, I, I agree, yeah, pork, definitely. All right, let's see if I can make this a little bit more challenging. Ooh. Are you, coffee or tea? Coffee. Ooh, that was quick. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Butter oh, or tallow? Oh, butter. Oh, yeah. tallow goes. I know. Yeah. All right, this is probably the hardest one. Gym or social media? Gym. Ah. Is that hard? <laughs> no. That wasn't Gosh, hard? No. No. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It's such yeah. an easy Social media me. goes. Mm. Yeah. Love social media. Great tool. But if you were like, you can have this or this. Oh my gosh, I will never ever give up the weightlifting, give up the gym. Never. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. I knew you'd chew that, by the way. Um, all right. A uh, couple more questions. Uh, these yeah. aren't the, the different style of questions. Um, who wins in an arm wrestle, Dr. Sean Baker or Dr. Anthony Chafee? <sighs> That's really hard. I've only got five seconds. Uh, sorry, five. Anthony, but Sean? Sean, <laughs> Sean I don't know. I just, I just, I just see Sean like ugh, losing it. But I think yeah. it would be an epic battle to say. You reckon? Least. You yeah. reckon? Oh, yeah. Anthony's got the age though. He's got, he's got age on his side. Because Sean's That's how true. Is Sean? He's, That's true. In his fifties, I believe. 50? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I think right. that would be like Clash of the Titans. <laughs> hey, I, I've got a, I've got two other titans here. Um, Jerome Armstrong or Jonathan Griffiths? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> They're both my really good friends. I know. Can so they, you're gonna have to pick five they... seconds. You don't have to answer it. Can they tie? Yeah, I mean, look, it's your answer. I'm not. <laughs> yep, they tie. They tie. Ooh. Yeah. Mm. They're both amazing people and very strong human beings. Yeah, that's a lol from Jerome. I don't know, Jerome, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, you Jerome. You can take on Jonathan. You know, you smack him down. What about you, Jonathan? Is Jonathan on? Is he watching? Maybe he went. If you're bed. watching, <laughs> hey, if you're watching, Jonathan, uh, you know, uh, flick through a comment after the live. If you're watching afterwards, um, if you're still talking to me, <laughs> yeah. <if you're... laughs> oh dear. Um, top five carnival foods. Oh, okay. Eggs for sure. Ground mm. beef, mm. Scotch fillet or ribeye. Ribeye, yep. Pork belly, picanha. Pic oh yes. I'm glad you included How that on the good list. Is it? Yeah, yes. yeah. I was like, oh, it's between chuck and picanha. What do I what do I choose? But oh man, that fat to protein ratio is just it's otherworldly. Oh mate. Yeah, that you, you you I think you've pretty much got what I would pick it in my top five. So um and last one, top five low carb keto or carnivore influences that you know will always sit <gasps> up there for you. Uh, the Baroness of Beef, no jokes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, who are the ones that really influenced me first? Uh, Bella, Steak and Butter Gal, yep. Dr. Sean Baker, mm. Anthony Chafee. Um, I, sh I should put Jerome Armstrong and Jonathan Griffiths. <laughs> um, yeah. But if you're thinking about the, <laughs> the, the, the sort of the, the big ones that we all know, um, Dr. Ken Berry and... Yeah. Who's, who's number five? Oh, I can't think of a fifth. I'm going, I'm like going through everyone on my YouTube that I watch that comes up in my feed. Yeah. Um, I like Lily Kane as well. Lily Kane. Yeah. I haven't heard of her yeah. for, I haven't seen her for a long time now. Yeah, she, she's, 
kind of fun, kind of quirky. Yeah, she is. some cool content. Yeah. Love it, love it. Well, uh, thank you for participating. <laughs> I hope they were challenging enough. <laughs> no, that was fun. I was just like, whoa, put on the spot. No, but I love yeah. it. Yeah, so that that's it. That's my little quirk in my live streams. But um, look, uh, I want to get to know you a little bit more, and I'm sure everyone does who are watching. Um, you know, I've heard your story, bits and pieces of it on, you know, different people's YouTube channels. But if you don't mind, just, you know, giving us a rundown of who Alicia is. How'd you come up with the name, you know, the Baroness of Beef? And <laughs> what it is that you do? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, I'm Alicia and I like long walks on the beach. No, kidding. Um, my name is Alicia. Uh, I am 43 years old and I'm from Australia as you can tell by my accent and from Joss as well. Um, mm. And I am currently studying to be a certified nutritionist who will work prominently in the keto carnivore space, but I will consult everyone that comes across my path. Everyone is welcome. Uh, when awesome. my Yeah, when my diploma comes through and I finally start consulting. Um, mm. So that's a really, really exciting part of my life. So pretty much my carnivore journey started on the 3rd of July of 2022. And oh, wow. um, yeah, yeah. So it's been almost two years and um, a lot of people have probably heard this story, so I'll try and tell it in, <laughs> in a slightly different way. Uh, yes. the, the, the main reason that I transitioned into a carnivore diet or carnivore lifestyle is that um, like everyone that kind of finds it, they're either looking to heal something or there's something going on with their health that they really want to address and they probably feel like they're running out of options, uh, whether that's mm. medically, dietarily, uh, you know, a, a broad spectrum of things. And um, Basically, I decided to try keto first, like a lot of us do. And the mm. reason why I adopted keto um, was to look to treat pain. I lived in chronic mm. pain. It was incredibly wearing on my physical and mental health. I have a condition called adenomyosis, which is a gynecological condition. A lot of mm. people are like, I've never heard of that. What on earth is that? Everyone's heard of endometriosis. So basically where endometriosis, end, that word, endometriosis, the tissue gets outside the uterine wall and grows in places that it shouldn't, adeno mm. is where it gets into the wall. So it's the right. same kind of, yeah, it's the same kind of symptoms that you can get, you know, excessively heavy bleeding, a, a very swollen, well, for me, very swollen uterus. Um, it was really starting to destroy my quality of life. Um, there were times mm. where I would be bedridden. I lived on a lot of pain medication and largely opioid medication for a very long time, probably close to 10 mm. years. And that takes a toll on the body and mm. does a lot of damage. And it just, it, it, it wasn't sustainable. I was like, am I really going to live the rest of my life pretty much until I go into menopause? Because that's the only thing that really starts to see these symptoms recede. Or am I going to go the other route and have a hysterectomy? Because that's the only total cure yeah. is just to yeah. completely remove everything. Adenomyosis, you cannot, you cannot cure it. It will always be a part of me. But I really wanted to see if there was something I could do to treat the pain. Because mm -hmm. it was not only the opioids, there was CBD oil. CBD oil is amazing and I think it's mm. a wonderful tool. In Australia, mm. it is unbelievably expensive. Yes. And yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Um, so paying $500 for three months, if I was lucky, of just the CBD oil was just not financially viable. Mm -hmm. so I was like okay I can't live on pain meds there must be something else I can try and do um I had gone to hospital to talk about getting the hysterectomy and at first the doctors seemed really sympathetic and really agreeable and, and it was all going to happen I was like okay great you know this, this will be the fix um and then the second time I went back to the clinic it was it was like speaking to a bunch of different people that were incredibly dismissive of me not empathic, trying to mm. push another procedure on me that essentially would just cauterize tissue within the uterine wall. And I was like, 
I don't, I don't want any of this. Um, I need to be in control of my own health. Yeah. Yeah. So off I went feeling pretty disenchanted. Um, but as we do, you know, we start researching and then looking at what's going on and, uh, ketogenic diets kept coming up in line with mm. endometriosis had no meiosis and i was yep. like okay you know it's it's i don't find this too extreme i can definitely sort of incorporate this into my lifestyle you know this you know this will be fun why not yep. so off i went started keto and um did see a little bit of, of remission of the pain and i was like okay cool um still wasn't quite enough. I really thought that it, it might be the silver bullet, but it, it wasn't quite. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, I noticed that I was hungry all the time. Mm. It didn't matter how much I ate. I was just starving all the time. But what I was hungry for was sugar mm. um, and fake sugars, uh, more to the point. So I stopped actually enjoying eating main meals. And all I wanted to do was eat dessert. I was literally just eating a main meal so I could have the dessert after it. And let me tell you, I am a wizard at making keto desserts. Like, I'm your gal. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I just spent my time making, you know, like keto chocolate and um, keto puddings and all these magical things with different ingredients that we do. And something was just wrong. And the, the more I did that, the more I craved sugar. And I'd never seen myself as a sugar addict, but I was suddenly, it was suddenly dawning mm. on me that I was. Um, so I was kind of thankful to keto for that. So I was like, I think I've actually had carb and sugar addiction going for far longer than I realized. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, okay, all right, something's not working here. Yes, I'm enjoying the food that I'm eating, but I'm actually, I don't feel like I'm getting much benefit from it. So I've got to try something else. What else can I do? The pain was starting to kick up again. The inflammation was happening. So I was like, right, okay, no more. Got to go deeper. So went back online and carnivore just kept coming up. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you thought this when you first saw it. I was like, that is mental. Yeah. I was like, 100%. That is so extreme. Yeah. I yeah. was like, no, no, no. How? How can you possibly just eat meat? Like, won't you get sick? Where does the nutrition come from? How yeah. am I going to poo? <laughs> exactly. And yeah. Yeah. I was just like, this This is crazy. Um, but the more I looked into it and the more I was like, I was watching interviews with people like Michaela Peterson yeah. um, and just, just hearing that story and I was like, there's, there's something there. There's, there's something really in there. And I was like, what if, what if I just gave it a chance? What, what harm at this point could it possibly do? And um, I was like, all right, I'm going to do it. And every run, everyone around me was just like, you're insane. I don't know why you would want to do this. I'm like, well, I'm just, I'm going to do it for seven days. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I could commit to. And I thought mm -hmm. that would make me seem less mad to everyone around me. So I was like seven days. So I did it. And by the end of the week, I wasn't needing to take my pain medication. Oh, wow, that quick. That quick. And I actually just kind of went, oh, I haven't reached for the pill packets and I'm not doing mm -hmm. the things I normally do. And I was like, okay. And I was like, look, I just maybe this is a bit of a glitch in the matrix. Okay, mm. sure. That was fun. I felt really good. Mm. I was like, I, I, I want to have dessert again. So I dropped it and went back to keto, quick, smart. And, of course, what do you think happened? All my problems started up again. Wow. And, um, and there, there was this day where I was at a bus stop and I had a block of my favourite keto chocolate and it was a mm. huge block. And I remember opening it and I put two squares in my mouth and then I put another two and I was literally shoveling this stuff into my face. I was, And I stopped and I was like, I know what this is. This is addict behavior. And believe me, I know yeah. I'm a recovering alcoholic. Like <laughs> you want to yeah, talk yeah. addiction? I got you. Um, mm. And I went, you, you were behaving like an addict. And I looked down at the packet and there's a couple of squares left. And I was like, no, nah, enough now. Everything is, is telling you what you did in those seven days. There was really something in there. I was like, right, I'm going to try it again. And, and I was like, this is a big commitment for me, but if, if yeah, the same yeah. thing happens again, mm -hmm. that's it. I, I cannot go back. 
So I did another seven days of carnivore. And at the end of that seven days, that was a point in my cycle where I should have been medicating to the hilt, no medication. Mm -hmm. Two wow. years later, here we are. Wow. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So, so like zero pain since that moment. So there's pain and there's pain. There's normal yeah, yeah, time yeah. of the month kind of stuff. Yes, um, yeah. And that's pretty much what I deal with. Like any any woman that has a nice, decent, regular cycle that, that doesn't cause them too many issues, yeah. that's me now. Whereas it was excruciating pain. Um, this is probably TMI, but just like huge yeah. clots falling out of my body, bleeds that wow. would, would go on for 10 days. Um, that's, that's completely changed now. Like I have a really regular cycle. Um, Minima, minimal pain that would just be akin to the normal kind of mm -hmm. menstrual cramps. Yeah. So it's a, it's such a turnaround for me. And to, to have my life back, to have, you know, that that element removed is just, well, what can I say? Look, I'm still amazed. And I hear a lot of these stories. But every time I hear, like, a story like that, where, where you've completely, you know, ameliorated um, a symptom like pain, uh, yeah. you know, and, and have kept it uh, at bay with just diet alone. Man, yeah. I, I still get shocked. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, it's amazing and well done, honestly. That's it's so oh, cool. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's you, and people are just like, you, you must, you must be, you know, BFing. I'm like, yeah. If, it, to me, I'm still flabbergasted. Like I look back and I'm like, if someone had told me about this way of eating yeah. years and years and years ago, and, and if my brain was ready to accept it, I would have, I would have left at it. It, it changed my life. Wow. And it stopped me from having to go through a procedure that I didn't have to have. Yeah. A hundred percent. And and that's, um, you know, uh, and I, and who would have known, who knows what, what, what the outcomes would have been with with that yeah. procedure you know and where yeah. you may have ended up uh so so you know you uh definitely you're looking well and you're you're you definitely seem like you're thriving on the diet uh that you're currently on so would you say yeah. current like right now what's what is your diet looking like um i'm a pretty simple gal uh i love yeah. chuck which i have a big pot of it ready <laughs> to go for after the live stream <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, I eat a, yeah, I eat a lot of ground beef, a lot of eggs. I mm. do have salmon, prawns, pork belly, picanha, uh, when I yes. can get to my, my amazing butcher. Um, yeah. I do have chicken on the odd occasion when I feel like it. Um, I was really kind of just allowing myself to just have this like huge amount of variety in the beginning because I really felt like I needed it and I think there was this fear that I'd be missing out on things. So I was just like, eat all the animal things that you possibly can. Like I was, I was having loads of um, pork rinds and things like that. And, um, and now it's just, yeah, it's, it's really same, same. And I'm so happy. Like people are like, you must be so bored. And I'm like, I am so content. I cannot tell you. It's, it's yeah. the strangest thing. You know, I, I was all about, you must have this array of variety. You know, when I was eating standard Australian diet, you know, yeah, there had to be, at least 50 things going on on the plate and a billion colors yeah. and all these types of things. And now as a carnivore, it's basically what you, you've got a couple of colors. You've got white, yellow, red, brown. <laughs> and <laughs> and, then, and I'm, I'm so happy with that. Like if you were like, you can only eat um, ground beef burger patties for the rest of your life. I'd be like, okay. Like I just, I do not feel like I'm missing out on anything. And, and that's, you know, one of the things that I love is that I know I can get up in the morning and just go to my mm. fridge and it's not like this minefield of, oh, I've got all these different things to cook and what should yeah. I make for dinner for the rest of the week? And, uh, and there's, it just takes that guesswork out and the stress and the, the amount of hours that I used to spend meal prepping, these elaborate yes. meals because, you know, yeah. I was like, I can't be bored. Um, yeah. yeah, it did really changes on carnivore. You, your tastes it's really change. And, and I thought also in the beginning I was like, spices i need to you know to, yeah. to season everything how how can i go without it and and now yeah, all yeah. i do is salt my food and and that is it 
So That's yeah, so things, funny, things eh? change. Yeah. Yeah. With, with with the whole seasoning thing. I used to season the crap out of my food when I first started. <laughs> yeah. um, honestly, like I, I was so scared that I would lose my palate that, that, yeah. that, you know, I'd just get so bored. But n- now I look back, I thought the, the seasonings never really did add much to the flavor of the food in the first place. Uh, you know, ha- added yeah. a little bit, but, yeah. but as you, you know move along, like, and you start to get more, you know, deep into you know the carnival lifestyle, you think, no, nah, it really, it's the beef that adds the flavor. Yeah, it's the so beautiful flavor. just tasting the actual yeah. meat. And yeah. and at first, I, I was just like, oh, that's no, that's boring. How could I possibly do that? But the more I did it, and mm. it was just yeah, it was like cutting out all the white noise. And and that is no shade to anyone that that loves to yeah. use seasonings. Go nuts! Like there are yeah. so many different variations of of carnivory which i love yeah. which allows people to be able to access the diet and the lifestyle um and i think that's really important and I, you know i know that <laughs> there's hardcore people in every single kind yep, of dietary camp. Yeah, <laughs> yeah oh yeah and it, it doesn't matter where you go what you do what you say like everyone is going to have an opinion of what you choose to put yeah. in your mouth but really at the end yeah. of the day are you happy are you healthy are you enjoying your food are you getting out of bed in the morning, you know, out of pain, the mental health's good, mm. you've had great sleep, you're, you're achieving the things that you want to, you know, that's that's far more important than you put some garlic on your steak, like, who cares? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's it. No, take give give your carnivore cards back. You've, you've, <laughs> you've fallen off the va- <laughs> You're not a carnivore, never was. No, uh, I, hate, I see it I all the time. Yeah. 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 I think, I think um, we... Yeah, we just need to be kinder to one another. Hundred percent, hundred percent, and that's you know what I'm all about anyway. Um, now uh, we 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 know each other mutually through you know our, our good friends Jerome and uh, Jonathan Griffiths. Yeah. Now uh, you, I know that you um, you train in the gym and you've been training for quite some time. But talk us through. You know, just a brief, uh, I guess, uh, rundown of of uh, your history in in training, and how yeah. this sort of lifestyle has changed all that. Because you you would yeah. have trained in in the whole, you know, bro science world. You know, <laughs> count your calories, yeah. track your, you know, oh, trim off the yeah. fat off your 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 chicken breast, that sort of thing. I do not miss those days at all. Dry chicken <laughs> breast. Yeah, <laughs> white rice and broccoli. Yeah, oh. yeah, it's like the holy Tell trinity of bodybuilding. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I was eating. Yeah, I guess a very bro-like diet. Um, and particularly when I was, uh, I I used to be an ambassador and a mentor for an Australian bodybuilding supplement brand called mm. Maxine's. Um, mm, yep. which was great. It was a, a wonderful experience. Um, but basically their preps were competition preps um and i would do them alongside my mentees so we were all doing it together and and, um sort of you know on the same bandwagon so we knew how each other felt and we Mm. kind of tracked the changes in our physique and stuff like that and um yeah it got to the point where i was dieting down so hard that i was just so unwell i had no fat coming in um and just eating loads and loads of carbohydrates uh loads and loads of oxalates like i was the oxalate gal mm. like so much sweet potato all the nut butters mm-hmm. all the spinach stuff like that yep. um and at that time i had no idea what an oxalate <laughs> even was yeah. um I knew, but I, I knew yeah i just knew i wasn't feeling that great um but um originally the way that i came into to weightlifting was in a response to getting sober uh i've been right. sober okay. for eight yeah for eight years now um my last drink was on christmas eve i think 2015. um oh thank you (laughs) it had to happen believe me or i wouldn't be sitting here talking to you (laughs) or be in prison um so uh you know i I had stopped drinking and i i there was this void of nothing the nothing was there which kind of can happen in recovery and I was about six months into sobriety at that stage and just mm. I felt like I just 
I was like, what am I doing? I have no goals. I was really starting to put on weight again because mm. I was, you know, eating, you know, all the things that I shouldn't to try and, you know, fill the void as it were. And mm. um, I, I walked into my local supplement store and just happened to look at the wall and there was a, a poster of the company I was just talking about that I ended up being an ambassador for, Maxine's, and they did a challenge. And there was this just, this woman looked incredible on the poster. She was, you know, um, just not hypermuscular, but fit and mm. toned and, and happy and just like she was standing there like, I'm boss, I own this. And in that moment, seeing that poster, I was just like, I want that. I'm going to do yeah. that. Mm. And so that day I went home and I signed up for my first 12-week challenge. Um, wow. And, yeah, and... That, that really started my love affair with uh, weightlifting and bodybuilding. Yeah. So I got my little home set up and... Um, Whoa, I train just, at home. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've largely trained at home. I'm, I, I I love the gym, but I have everything yeah. here, here that I need, yeah. um, which is great. And it's good because no one can take over your machine and sit there, you know. Uh, my your pet way. peeve. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of the way. What yeah. did you set? Um, yeah, so and I'm I'm some people love to train with a training partner, you know, that's really motivating, yeah. um, which I think is great. But I've always been a lone wolf. I I found it very hard. Oh, you are too. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Yeah. I hate training with people. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> I'm I'm the type of person that just, you know, I, I need to have my space and this is and honestly, like my thoughts when I go into the gym and I start training is is totally yeah. different. And so I don't yeah. like people to read my thoughts that are going on right now and you know it's just <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's just been a, a very solitary thing and I think it's yeah. as well it was something that was just mine that no one could take from me like this is my time um yeah, yeah. yeah so I just you know I've, I've trained with with PTs before and I've loved that and that's been yeah. fine but yeah. you kind of just find your own groove and what works for you and being a solitary you know when I put the headphones in and you know the the metal yeah. goes in or whatever I felt like listening to that day it's game on and it's yeah. work I'm not there to chat mm -hmm. and and, no, and socialize no. it's just like i'm here to work do the thing get out and go and fuel um so yeah i started with home setup and i kind of um learned you know the basics and and you mm -hmm. know sort of got all those those compound movements that you you first learn down pat yeah and just the more i lifted and the more I, I saw my body composition change and and how i felt you know it was like i was building up my own personal armor and as someone yeah. that has felt largely out of control um, and unsafe in her life uh, due to many reasons, it was like I was building body armor. Mm. It was protective for me. And, you know, mm. it's that, yeah, sure, you're feeling physically strong, but, man, you flex you flex the mind so yeah. much when you're lifting. You know, there's, there's so much more um, than just the physical act of, you know, picking up a heavy thing. Um, oh, 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. It, it was really transformative for me. So, you know, fast forward a whole bunch of years down the track um, after doing this challenge that just completely sparked mm. off this love of weightlifting, I ended up uh, being an ambassador and a mentor for that supplement mm. brand, which blew my mind to see me standing up there like, hey, with a whole bunch of, yeah. you know, other people. I'm like, how did this happen? Um, so, yeah, that, that, that's been an amazing part of the journey. But, um, Unfortunately, the flip side of, of you know dieting down really heavily um, to to get hyper lean, um, mm. to to take the photos that you need to and, and to, to enter into competition and things like that. Um, it just yeah, it ended up kind mm. of backfiring on me and my hormones were just completely trashed and I didn't know just how badly I trashed them as well until I came into carnivore because right. I just I I had no idea what being properly hungry and properly full were mm -hmm. and so when i first started carnivore um i was definitely under eating <laughs> and a pro tip anyone that comes into carnivore eat 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 as much as your body asks you for don't sit there and get hung up on just like no i've had this yep, portion yep. of meat before so i must stick to this it's like throw all that out the window <laughs> Yeah, and particularly no, fill that plate you, up. <laughs> fill the plate, please. Um, yeah. And particularly if you have a history of um, yeah. restriction and crash dieting yeah. and, and and all those different types of things, it's so important to, to really get nourished. Um, so when I did start 
you know, concertedly eating on carnivore. It was like my appetite just went mental, like insane. Mm. And I was like, how am I still fitting this into my body? I'm a five foot two little pocket yeah. pocket. Yeah. And sitting there, you know, with a good, decent kilo of meat for one meal. And I seriously yeah. thought there was something wrong with me. <laughs> but there wasn't <laughs> and there isn't <laughs> for no, any of you not. that are experiencing yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like the body is like, you have robbed me of the materials to build this foundation for so long. Now you're giving them to me. Come on in, baby. It's just like, yeah. Let let the nutrition oh, flood in. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, before I uh, get in with, with, with what I was going to say, I just want to acknowledge Aid Larson, uh, comment here, greetings and super superior metabolic health to all. Hello, thank sir you, Thank you. Hello, 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 hello. Thank you, thank you. Oh, and guys, um, if you have any questions or anything you would like to ask, please feel free to comment and uh, let us know along. And I'll uh, flick it through the screen here so that Alicia can see for herself as well. Thank you. Um, what was the point I was going to have? Oh, performance-wise, being yeah. uh, pretty much zero carb. Yeah. What's your experience been? Did you start off rocky or did you just hit the ball rolling and full of energy <laughs> and, you know, yeah. Um. Yeah, Funny. funnily enough, for the first week, which is weird because I was mm -hmm. um, going through adaptation, I still felt really quite strong, um, even though mm. I was having a lot of stuff happening due to, to the um, fuel changeover, as it, as it were. Um, mm. And then sort of in the, in the couple of weeks after that, I, I noticed I was like, okay, feeling a little more fatigued, not seeing the pump that I quite used to. Um, and I was like, oh, no, <laughs> am I ever going to mm. feel those things again? Is yeah. it going to come back? And your body, your body just finds a way. Like yeah. and before when I was lifting, um, eating the standard Australian diet, I had to have food in my body before I trained. Like yes. I had to. I would not. Yeah. I would go and almost throw up on a leg day from eating, yeah. you know, protein pancakes an hour and a half before because you had to have the food in you. Yeah. And to be able to train fasted, I was like, that's nuts and I'll never do it. And I started yeah. doing it. And training on an empty stomach feels amazing. It's just 100%. you are laser focused. Your body gives you everything that you need. You still got fuel yeah. in the tank from the day before. It's like wow. I never ever thought that would be a thing for me, but um, it's my preference now, a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm the same. I, I cannot train with anything in in, in my stomach. A and mm -hmm. when I was eating, you know, the sad diet, I was the pre workout meals used to be the thing for me. Like I would just carb. Like shovel yeah. shoveling all the carbs in and, and try to get all that energy um yeah what about the caffeine are you are you in the coffee or <gasps> just in a shame yes <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I, i'm not taking any cards today i'm, I'm uh, no judgment i i I'm, yeah i'm drinking the coffee <laughs> yep yeah. I, I i did cut it for a period of time and i felt really, really yeah. good without it um yeah yeah, and just life happened and stress happened and, you know, yeah. she slips back in there and, look, truth be told, I absolutely love the taste of coffee. Yeah. I love yeah. about it. Um, I yeah. love my coffee with cream and I have it every single morning. Yeah. And at this at this point in time, I have no plans to cut it. I should probably cut it down <laughs> maybe <laughs> yeah. to a cup. Um, and I think I'm, I actually really enjoy the ritual of just sitting there and in the morning and just taking the time. Yeah. To, to have the coffee um so yeah is it for everything i don't know hmm. is it a now thing hell yeah yeah it's a now thing oh look yeah. if, if i train like it, for me it's a now thing if i'm you know gonna hit high intensity if i'm gonna go to gym i want to be at my peak like i want to be <laughs> so yeah. yeah coffee for me is is that you know that one last thing i want to hold on to um and if it's if it's for you know you know, it's, if it's for the gains, I'm, I'm I'm willing to keep it in there. Yeah, it's like, look, yeah. I think keeping anything in, in the diet in line with your chosen path of carnivory, if it works for you, it works for you. You know, if, it, if it's not yeah. causing you issues, if it's not negatively impacting your health and it's something that's manageable in your life, go for it. Mm -hmm. Live your life. Be happy. Yeah. Yeah. And aid. 
I have a cup of coffee once a week when I visit the neighbor with hardly any oxalates in coffee. If you're in a clean carnivore regime, then coffee is the last thing you need to ditch. It's the last thing that I need to ditch. <laughs> Same. Yeah, thanks for that, Aid. Yeah. Yeah, yep. thanks, Aid. That, that, that makes me feel better. Mm. <laughs> I, think, I think, you know, we worry about the judgment of other people, but we're the harshest critics of what we choose yeah. to do in life. Yeah. So, you know what, mm. give yourself space, give yourself grace. Like I said, if, if there's no negative impact to you and it's something that you enjoy to do and it gives life a little mm. bit of variety and spice, I say, why not? Yeah, why not? And, and if it, if it, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's not about the carnivore diet. It's about you as an individual. Like if, if you have to, you know, uh, have a non-negotiable that, you must have uh, due to whatever reason you choose to. Um, if, if if it means you know you stick into a largely carnivorous diet, it's going to be better for you in the long term. You know, so yeah, yeah, I love that. Love that message. Um, so I'm going to take a different turn. If we've got no questions, I've, I've I'm going to take a turn into this whole addiction uh, yeah. topic because. You know, I, I've i struggled with carb addiction for yeah. pretty much all of my life. And I didn't, I obviously did not um, acknowledge it up until I, I did Keto Carnivore. Mm. When, you, when you get into Carnivore, and, you know, with your experience, did you feel that the cravings just went away? Or do you still have you know, cravings. Yeah, my cravings did just go away. Um, like that. And that was another mind blowing aspect mm -hmm. to know that, you know, like I said, I was, I was a complete sugar addict and a complete carb mm. addict. And um, seeing sugar constantly as a reward yeah. And, and, you know, looking for that dopamine hit via the sugar. Um, and also particularly, you know, after, say, I'd been competing, I'd been, you know, on a very strict diet. Yeah. No sugar, no nothing. Like you're just crawling towards the finish line. And the thing that you're really crawling towards is once everything is done and dusted, you get that cheat yeah. meal. And it, yeah, yeah, it's not just a cheat meal. It's like a cheat year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a bit extreme. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, 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 I have photos of some of the things that I would eat after. Like, basically, it was just like a dog on a leash, and it's broken. I'm yeah, like, oh, I'm ravenous. Yeah. Um, you know, hoeing into sugar covered donuts like a great white shark, and um, you know, doing things like getting a whole jar jar of um Biscoff spread and packets oh. of Biscoff biscuits, and then dipping them in it, and just eating the whole thing and just going this is the best thing ever but of course the way i would feel after like the kickback was so bad i was just like oh, oh yep. this is so mm -hmm. not worth it and of course your physique just goes insane your health is just like oh what have you done to me um and it was that constant sort of um putting these things up on a pedestal because i'd felt i would deprived myself for so long that reinforced that deprivation reward system mm, mm. um so i was obsessed i was obsessed with sugar and i didn't even realize it because you know i was like yeah but i don't sit there just all the time just you know eating biscuits and stuff like that but i was yeah. constantly in the background chasing sugar and mm. carbs um so yeah uh, the, the thing that really helped for me was getting my fat levels right on carnivore that that completely eradicated any cravings for me um and it's really interesting now like now if i feel like something that's dessert like if i treat myself yeah. in a sense and and that's only every now and then um things like um heavy cream tastes sweet yeah. to me now and i love that you know if i want that, yeah, i can yeah. do that and i can make a carnivore cheesecake say if i'm going to a celebration where i feel like i i want to be able to you know have a celebratory dessert with other people, but it doesn't have that same crazy pull that 
a treat would have where it would just as soon as the, the fork went in into the cake or whatever, it's literally like you just could not stop. Um, mm. But now I'm just like if I choose to have a portion of something that is a, a, a carnivore-friendly dessert, I have the portion. I'm like, cool, and just don't even think about it. Like there's no, there's nothing tethered to that and I don't feel tethered to that, which I love. So, yeah. That is awesome. That That's amazing. And so it can be done, people. It really can. Mm -hmm. Can. Mm. Can live it's your life uh, without sugar and carbs. Aid. No, here's what's important in life. Health, family, freedom, integrity. And coffee. I agree. Kidding. And coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Cheers. Cheers with my water, Aid. Yeah. Cheers with my water too. My Water in a wine oh, glass. Mm. We fancy. Mm. Oh, well. Uh, all right aid i found it easy to not have cravings because i identify sugar and carbs as poison and not for human consumption me too me too it's but, really interesting when you reframe it mm. Mm -hmm. look I, i'm i'm gonna be very honest here like and i've said this on my channel a lot and it, and it's probably because i'm you know because of how long i've i've been a big sugar addict for um, I have the opposite experience, um, Alicia, and I yeah. still, to this day, I still have cravings. Definitely wow. not as bad. Not as bad yep. as I used to. Yeah. Um, but they seem to come, and I, and, I, and, and I guess my mission and my goal, you know, as I navigate through this, has been mm. to find out what the triggers are. And it, 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 yeah. it, it's, it can be stress. It can be, you know... Um, you know, something eventful that might have happened that day, I mm. I still can't pinpoint it. But I will crave the most stupidest things. Like I will walk past a bakery and I, I, I don't want the cake. I don't want the, you know, the fancy croissants. I want something like a plain biscuit, like something really, like if I was to crave something, <laughs> I want to crave something really good. But I want yeah. to <laughs> nah. Yeah. Arrowroot biscuit, and, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, <laughs> like the other day, I craved a scone. I'm like, can I just crave something wow. else? Like, something cool. But no, no. Any, anyways, like, look, I just, um, yeah, I, I found it, I, I still find it difficult. But every mm. day, every week, every month, I find yeah. a new strategy for me to, you know, for, for me that, that works. And, and, um, uh, the last, you know, the last, so I've been carnival for about two years and a couple of months. Mm. And I only really went off the rails last Christmas for, <laughs> you know, the month of December. And when I meant, you know, off the rails, I was Monday to Friday, I was carnival. <laughs> On the weekend, I was, <laughs> I was pretty much, everything. you know, <laughs> everything, you know, I was standard Western diet, uh, you know. Yeah. And, and for that month, I felt. I felt bad. I felt horrible. And, mm. um, and you know, January came, uh, you know, World Carnival Month. I thought, you know, mm. what better way to just, you know, get back and restart and, and start getting back into things. It was hard. And and and, yeah. and I felt deflated. I, f I felt shit. Sorry, excuse my language. I felt no, deflated I because, know. you know, for two years I'd, I'd worked on, on myself to, to curb these cravings, but it just, it, it, it was it, the first week into January. I was craving sugar. Yeah, mm. it's mm. it's a, an extremely addictive substance, and you know, yeah. there's people don't realize there's years and years of conditioning and wiring there that you really have to work mm. through. And some people, you know, what you'll go on carnivore within days, you just don't care about sugar. But there are people like yourself that are years down the track that it's still a struggle yeah. and it's a work in progress. So be really yeah. gentle with yourself. You know, it sounds like that you're, you're really figuring out where the triggers are, you know, connecting yeah. the threads there. And yeah. the fact that you you keep committing to your health, that's a beautiful thing mm. and that needs to be celebrated. Oh, thank you. Um, and And you know what? Like, and, and and I just mentioned it was Monday to Friday carnivore. A lot of people will say, "Well, that's still a good thing," and you know that that's a lot better than you probably were eating before. But you yeah. know, because I'd committed for so long for two years, you know, I, I I thought, "Wow, the the weekends were, you know, I'll just give it a go, just just to see, you know, how my body would react." 
but yeah. I was right back into it. Like it was, it was, it was crazy. Um, yeah. and, and I thought, you know, you know, I, I could actually get myself back on track, you know, um, quite easily, but, but it took, it took a couple of weeks and, um, actually right now and, and, uh, you know, it, it took a while for me to, to actually seek for help and to yeah. see if I could, um, you know, uh, cut back on, 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 on my weight. Cause I'd, I'd put on about three kilos. I reached mm. out to Jonathan cause I'm like, man, I, I need help. I need yeah. help. I, like, uh, I, I don't feel any other symptoms, but I can see my weight, you know, increasing. And, and although it's only three kilos, I was scared to go back into that, that, you know, that zone where I'll just keep putting yeah. on weight. So I did. And, uh, you know, it, it was, it was a humbling thing for me because I thought I had already done carnivore in the past and it's just easy. Go back to mm. eating meat, but no, I had to actually commit to, to seeking out assistance, which is, which was a hard yeah. thing. Mm. Yeah. And mm. you know, it, it, it takes, it takes a lot for you to, to, to get real with yourself in those moments and realize that perhaps maybe you can't do it alone yeah. and it's okay to seek connection and support and that's why there's an amazing myriad of coaches like Jonathan like Jerome mm. and me in six months um <laughs> that, that are there to oh, help yes. you know yeah. Yeah. yeah and um I I think you you did an amazing thing for yourself by just going nah I can't do it alone you know and yeah. um that takes a lot of courage so I hear you're absolutely smashing it so congratulations oh thank you Hearing from, oh, did Jonathan tell you. <laughs> mm -hmm. <Yeah>. Oh, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, yeah. I, I, I'm, when I, when I have my mindset on some, and I think, you know, that's probably my, you know, that, that's motivation for me because, you know, if, if I've got someone in my ear telling me that I'm, I'm doing well and, and, and at the same time, pretty much trying to kill me at the same time. I messaged them today. I messaged them. I, I actually messaged them saying, um, you know, this is probably the first time in, in my whole, uh, you know, gym career that someone's actually made me cry. Like this is, yeah. this is in, these workouts are intense. <laughs> yeah. Have they got you on high intensity training? Oh, dude. Yes, they do. Yeah. Uh... So, <laughs> uh, I've been a power lifter for, for my pretty much all of my twenties, I'm 30 yeah. now. And so I'm, I'm used to one rep maxes, like three, yeah. three, three reps. That that's, that's hypertrophy for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so I'm used to lifting very heavy now. Um, you know, um, it's, it's a whole different thing. I can, I can talk about it and it, it will. Oh, know, I'm sure that's, that's a whole on, but, separate live yeah. stream that might, might be interesting yeah. for um, a bunch yeah. of us to do, but, um, yeah, it's um, it's such a game changer, and it is, man. And, you know, coming from standard lifting and then trying that was just like, what is this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's yeah, it's amazing, and I'm so glad that you're seeing the benefits of that. I definitely am, and sorry, I've got AIDS coming here. Guess what? I bought a carnivore T-shirt from, and I get to wear it at a housewarming party. <sighs> All the looks you're gonna get. <laughs> I love that you're going to turn up with tallow soap and bone broth as a gift. <laughs> Can you turn crazy. up to my house with that, please? Yeah, 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 yeah. Morning. Just turn up. <laughs> Just turn up with the tallow soap. Oh, tallow soap. I, I've actually, I actually do want to get into tallow soap. That's something I want to. I'm curious mm. for carnivore-friendly mm. um, beauty and and skincare products. Yeah. I've never actually tried any, so that's that's something that I should really look into. Yeah, mm -hmm. give it a go. Hundred percent. Mm. Um, how are you with time, by the way? Are you, you're, you're all good? I'm good. I'm good. We'll, we'll wrap up when, when you're ready to go, when you got to head off to, to work. I get to head off to work yeah, in about an hour and a half, but that's okay. Yeah. I'm taking my time. I'm enjoying this. Um, <laughs> um, hmm, other questions I've got. Well, I have a question for you. What made mm. you first come to carnivore? Desperation. I was desperate, man. So, uh, you know, I, like to cut a story down really short, I, I, I'm i 30 right now and pretty much all throughout my 20s, I I had a lot of cardiovascular disease symptoms. Mm. And, and, uh, and because of my 
supposed family history of males within my family having heart attacks at a young age and, and whatnot, you know, I was told the standard thing, lower your cholesterol, eat a low fat diet, go to the gym, eat less, move more, blah, blah, blah. So I did all that, but none of that shit worked. Sorry, my language. <laughs> none of that I worked. I love it. I love it. Bring it on. <laughs> um, and and I, I just grew frustrated, and 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 it made me, um, you know, just just I just wanted to keep uh, and and you know, my background. I'm a registered nurse, so yeah. I have a little bit of knowledge about physiology and and health and whatnot, and so. You know, I use that to my advantage. I I went into a deep dive and, you know, landed in this thing called inflammation. But I went the wrong way and went the sort of plant based way because that that was the way to lower inflammation. Yeah. Um. But that made my health more shit. I started getting you know more pain. Uh. Yeah. I put more weight on, and it got to a point where I was really having these symptoms like nearly every week um mm. and i had this this thing in my mind telling me you know once you turn 30 your life is going to go downhill because you know you, you don't <laughs> i don't know why that some, someone told me that and and you just had to you know work on yourself and mm. and get yourself you know fit and healthy at 30 because it's just gonna you know health problems is gonna start kicking in mm. I was going downhill and I was hitting 30 and I thought, God, um, I don't know what to do. And then someone told me about low carb and I thought, nah, it's crazy. It's crazy because you need carbs to survive. You Every nurse knows that. You, you need carbs. If someone's low on blood sugar, you know, you need to, you know, you know feed, feed your brain with, 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 yeah. with all these carbohydrates but anyways yeah i i just took it on the chin and and i thought i've tried everything let's let's go mm -hmm. with uh this keto business and oh wow i was losing weight and yeah. oh wow i have energy oh wow i thought you know my whole life it was normal to have three to four poos a day <laughs> and you know i was feeling great like at first it was, mm -hmm. it, was it was scary look i won't lie my first, you know, few weeks on on keto carnivore, and I'm sorry, this might be TMI, but you know, I, it'd be it. two to three days. I won't be doing, I won't have any movement. And I, I'll, I'd be yeah. scared shitless. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, something's wrong. Abort, abort. Something's yeah. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd feel no no pain or discomfort. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So yeah, all, all these things. It just it, it uh, you know, it, it just felt right. Yeah, and then yeah, like you, I was uh, sort of, and that was sort of when I was keto, and then the carnivore thing popped up in the algorithms, and I thought, "What the hell? This is going to get even what more crazier." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but it, but it did make sense, and and then and then the minute I thought, "Let's go carnivore," right? Uh, this day, I, I'm going to commit to carnivore. I started thinking about the foods that I was already eating and I'm like, hang on. I'm already eating a carnivore diet. I, I'm, only, I'm only eating <laughs> blueberries. Um, what was I drink? Miso soup. And mm. uh, it was something else. And it, you know, it was, it, I couldn't count more than 10 things that are yeah. carnivore. So I'm like, I've been doing a carnivore diet anyway. Mm. Anyways, that, that, that's, you know, condensing everything down <laughs> to, I show. love that. And I was going to yeah. ask as well, Joff, was it hard for you to share your carnivory with your colleagues considering your work profession? Do, did you, do you share it? Did you cop a lot of flack? I do. I do. Yeah. I copped a lot of flack. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think um, the longer I became more confident about this way of eating, Mm. the less I gave a shit about what people said and, and people would 100%. say some pretty nasty stuff, um, yeah. you know, and people will, will try and, and, and steer you away from it. So uh, obviously you get a lot of um, compliments and, and people are telling you doing the right thing. Mm. Um, but, oh my gosh, think about your arteries. Think about 
you know, cancer and all that. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I do. It, it was it was it was difficult uh to come out at first uh and start telling people that I don't eat vegetables and fruits and carbs. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it it yeah, as I said, I just stopped caring at the end of the day. And mm. you have to, the, the only person it should matter to is you. Mm, you mm. know what works for you, you're reaping the benefits, are you happy, mm, mm. are you healthy? Great. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got more I got more um flack from the sort of fitness space and the right. gym world. Yeah, like yeah. like with, with my professional life it, 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 in hospitals and, and with with you know health professionals, they they were actually quite positive. But the gym <laughs> bros and the gym girls were oh, they were brutal. Weren't having it. No, <laughs> no, they were not. Yeah, yeah. Um, what have we got here from Aid? Why am I allowed to buy, buy one kilo of sugar without restriction, but I can't buy a kilo of cocaine? Sugar is more addictive. Settle down, yes. Scarface. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Why yeah, not? Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Why it's is it true. legal to have sugar? Yeah. 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 No, I agree. How about you? Actually, you know that that's a question I wanted to ask you because you're studying to become a nutritionist. Yeah. Um, you know, did you uh, actually did did you do that prior to did you start prior to doing carnivore or did you? No. no. <laughs> yeah. So I I started studying with a university that. I thought was the right fit for me. Um, and unfortunately inside that institution, they are, uh, they mm. were completely rigid and mm. we were told the Australian healthy plate. And if you've seen the Australian healthy plate, you'll know how yep. incredibly wrong that is. Yep. Basically you are only to tell your clients to eat that. And that is it. Mm. And that combined with, content that I just could not resonate with um, inept lecturers, uh, I was mm. like, I am not staying here. So I left and I'm now with an institution that is incredible. I've oh, good. never good. seen a place where they just embrace the spectrum of humanity. They understand low carb, they understand keto, carnivore, yep. intermittent fasting, you know, all the different types of protocols that a human being could possibly bring into your office as a clinical nutritionist, they get it. They get that there's not one wow. size that fits all because the government says so. I really respect that. And the first thing I did when I got, you know, my curriculum and I was looking through things, I went straight down to the nutrition stuff and I was like, right, and clicked yeah, yeah. on the, the assignments. So I was like, oh, thank gosh. Because <laughs> <laughs> like I felt like, yeah, I could actually be myself and I didn't have to hide mm. and just box tick. It's not that I'm there at, at, at this institution to rattle cages and be like, yeah. oh, I do this and this yeah, is yeah. from the norm. I'm not interested in that. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm a carnivore for me. Um, but I really respect that understanding. Um, and mm, I think that's so important, you know, in 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 any kind of um uh health and fitness or, or even healthcare profession is understanding that spectrum of human needs. And, you know, mm -hmm. you're not just going to be able to fit them into this box. And yeah, yeah. So I'm absolutely loving it. Um, I've just gained, we have to do work placement. Um, I feel like oh, I'm back cool. at school in my yeah. um, we, have to do, we have to do work placement. So I've, um, it looks like I've, I've just secured that with um, a female, uh trainer which i'm really excited about she's got loads of knowledge um oh, so being sick. under her tutelage and you know just absorbing mm. stuff like a sponge I, I can't wait for that um yeah so that that's really exciting and really fulfilling so you know as much as i've mm. enjoyed my what 20 plus year retail career it's th th there's more than that for me so yeah i'm really looking forward to to coming out with that diploma and doing the thing that really nourishes me Oh, that's amazing. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Hey, after this, I might actually ask you about the institute or whatever. Oh, yeah, provider. Sure. Yeah, 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 definitely. Because I'm yeah. I'm studying right now to be a health coach. Great. Um, step, stepping away from, I mean, I'm still a nurse, but, you know, uh, ha yeah. adding this to my sort of accolade. But uh, I was actually looking yeah, at yeah. Um, studying to become a, thank you. Um, yeah, the nutritionist pathway. Uh, but like you said, uh, there's 
some you look at some of the curriculum and um, some of the things that these uh, mm. major universities, like a lot of the big universities, offer, and you think, oh, yeah, I don't know if I can do yeah. that. Mm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, talk, I had to chuckle talk. while you were talking. Um, <laughs> Australian healthy plate, throw away the food and eat the plate. <laughs> I would rather do that, eh? <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. 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 Oh, man. All right. Well, hey, look, I, we're, we're in, we've reached the hour mark. Uh, we have. I, think I probably should get ready to go to work. Yeah. Um, responsibilities there. Eh? Yeah, responsibilities. That's it. That's it. But you know what? It's been lovely to chat with you. Um, you know, you've got an amazing story and, and, um, I think, uh, people should go and follow you on YouTube. You, you've got, um, amazing content. Uh, if you don't mind just sharing your, uh, YouTube handle and, um, yeah. where people can find you and also, uh, so you, you haven't finished your nutritionist course yet, have you? No, no. They can't, not can't, yet. Can't, I'm six months away. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I would yeah, I would love to spruik myself off about that, but in six months, yeah, yeah. if any of you <laughs> would like a consult, <laughs> yeah. I, I yeah. I've I've been very um, you know, transparent about this from the beginning and and you know, yeah. I have issues with with people that perhaps neglect their duty of care and go on to consult in exchange for money in the health mm. space when hundred percent they're not qualified and no. they don't have the knowledge behind them. And it would be remiss of me to to ever offer those services. I've had people reach out via emails. I just shoot them onto the coaches that I know because I want yeah. them to be taken care of. And that's the whole point. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. it's like in healthcare, you know, you, you need those yeah. credentials under your belt um, to be you able do. To, to, to do your job to the best of your professional ability and make sure that your mm -hmm. clients are safe. So, yeah. But I am uh, at the Baroness of Beef. Um, I don't mm. do Insta yet. <laughs> uh, watch this space. I'm thinking about it. I don't know why I'm freaked out by Insta. Uh, <laughs> you'll but, get um, there. You'll get there. <laughs> yeah, I will. I, you'll never see me dancing up a storm on TikTok. I think the YouTube shorts kind of fulfill my little TikTok-y yeah. one. Um, yeah, yeah. So I'll just keep it there. But um, yeah, if if you haven't come over to the channel, I would love to have you there. Please come over, see the content, and if you feel like it, hit subscribe. Definitely, definitely. Um, all right. Well, thank you again for your time, Leisha. My pleasure. Uh, thank you. Definitely, Josh. would love to do this again if you if you're willing. Um, Hundred percent. Stage. Yeah. Oh, yay! Uh, I'll acknowledge uh, AIDS last comments here. Seven days without beef makes one week. Mm, I like that. <laughs> Put it I on like a shirt. It, yes. The welfare, the of, the welfare of the people comes first. A hundred percent AIDS. Yeah. And that's a good way to cap it off. So guys, yeah. uh, thank you again. Guys and girls, uh, please subscribe to the Baroness of Beef. Pointing here somewhere. There you go. Wait, yep. <laughs> and uh subscribe to my channel too if you haven't please um, do and uh i will see you guys next week have i got a live stream next week i'm trying to do these weekly but i don't know if i got one lined up maybe we'll see <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see you guys next time ciao all right Ooh. how do i <laughs> we might